The power of an indestructible life in Christ. Now, we are in Christ because of faith in Him. So, we're not getting into Christ, trying to be in Christ. We are in Him. Because we are, we've been made one with Him. That is such a powerful thing. Because now, it's no longer you doing your part for God to do His part. He did. He, he, you receive freely what He did. Through the cross. From God's sight, everything is open for reconciliation. There's nothing man can add. God did it all. It's just your time to lay hold of the favor offered to you. And be reconciled to God. Like a woman that says yes when a man asks her to marry. Will you marry me? Yes. In this union and communion with Him, love is brought to completion. And attains perfection with us. That we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. In this union and communion, communion with Him, love is brought to completion. He says, we can have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as He is in this world, so are we. What a powerful little sentence there. <laughs> as He is in this world, so are we. As He is in this world, so are we. So we can have this confidence that as He is in this world, so are we. If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, you know that. Verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You died with Christ. Galatians 2 verse 20. Paul explained it like this. He says, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives. So, I'm a new creation. I died with Christ. He's alive in me. I'm one with Him, according to John 17. We are one. And now it says in 1 John 4, that as He is in this world, so are we. Now let's start with this. As He is in this world, so are we. If, if you read 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 also, it says, He became sin for us who knew no sin, so that we might be the righteousness of God. Let's read the whole portion there, because it speaks about being reconciled to God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5. This is awesome. You are one with Christ, and in Him... As he is in this world, so are we. Verse 17, Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, he's a new creation, old, previous order of things have, has passed away, built a fresh and a new has come. Also speaking about a new agreement. But all things are from God. Who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself. Reconciled us to himself. Gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now this reconciled us to himself. It's not just, you know, in a sense of reconciliation. Like we have in, in, in politics and in different countries you speak of reconciliation. Parties coming together and getting a kind of an agreement. This reconciliation is a total reconciliation. This one is more like John 17. Becoming one. <laughs> it's not just something like an agreement. Okay, we all agree. The parties agree. We, this, this reconciliation. No, we've been reconciled to God. It says even in the body of Christ. Through the death of, of His Son. So, but let, let's just explain. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with Himself, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them and committing to us the ministry of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. 
God making His appeal as it were through us. We beg you for His sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered to you and be reconciled to God. If you speak of the gospel, probably one of the main clauses or the main points of the new agreement is this. The new agreement is a testament. I don't like the word covenant because it speaks about two parties that have to do their part. But we have a testament in Christ. So this main, the main point of the new agreement, let me just say that slowly. God did your part through Christ. <laughs> you are the beneficiary of a testament. Thank you, Jesus. That is such a powerful thing. Because now it's no longer you doing your part for God to do His part. He did. He, he, you receive freely what He did through the cross. Okay, so the main point would be forgiveness of sins. Do you get it? Forgiveness of sins. One of the main points. But do you know the, the, the even more important point of that is because forgiveness of sins was just opening the way for you to experience Jesus. So reconciliation is what the gospel is about. Making us one with the Father, making us one with Him, is what it is about. God wanted to be among His people. God wanted children. He wanted a family. He wanted union with people. And so he, 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 it says God, um, but God in Ephesians 2. Let's go to Ephesians 2 also. But before I go there, let's finish 21. For our sake... He made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in and through Him we might become the righteousness of God. You're not just righteous. You are, you are the righteousness of God. As He is in this world, that's what I'm busy with, so are we. As righteous as He is. <laughs> but Marnus, I don't feel like that. Sure. It's time for us to hear this so much that we actually believe it and see ourselves as He sees us. As He is in this world, so are we. As righteous as He is, so are we. I was going to Ephesians 2, yes. Ephesians 2. On, on the way, yes, let's go to Ephesians 2. Just verse 1. You He made alive when you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Okay. Verse 4. But God, so rich is he in his... Verse 1 to 3, you read, but then you come to verse 4 and you say, but God. That's the, that's the most beautiful word, but, in the Bible. <laughs> okay? The, that, that but works. Other buts you throw out. Because you, you, sometimes people will say, yeah, God forgave you, but... Your God wants you to be healed, but. Your God wants you to prosper, but. But, but, but. But this but you keep. <laughs> but God, so rich is He in His mercy, because of and in order to satisfy His great, wonderful, and intense love with which He loved us. Even when we were dead by our shortcomings and trespasses, He made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ Himself. Says the Amplified. It is by grace that you are saved. And He raised us up together with Him. Made us sit down together. Reconciled us, right? In the heavenly sphere in Christ Jesus. In Christ. He did this. That he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the, un, the limitless surpassing riches of his free grace. That, that is so awesome. He says, but God, in order to satisfy his intense love, brought us together in fellowship and in union with him. Made us sit down together. Do you get it? It was all because of love. To reconcile us to Him. <laughs> to make us one with Him. In relationship. 
And so that's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, Now we beg of you, lay hold of the favor offered to you. From God's side, everything is open for reconciliation. There's nothing man can add. God did it all. It's just your time to lay hold of the favor offered to you and be reconciled to God. As He is in this world, so are we. An indestructible, untouchable life in Christ. Ah. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that is in Christ, shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. I will stay of the Lord. is my refuge, my fortress, my God. On Him I lean and rely and on Him I, uh, I confidently trust. Then He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His pinions and under His wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and His faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror of the night nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of destruction and sudden death that surprise and lay waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be, as you witness the reward of the wicked. You are the righteous, because you have May the Lord your refuge and the Most High your dwelling place. There shall no evil befall you. That little sentence. That's what I mean. You preach. There shall no evil befall you. Then people say, but. <laughs> and that's the difference. That's the difference. We preach it as it is. No but. <laughs> no evil shall be for you. Full stop. <laughs> and you need to hear that until that becomes a picture in your heart of who God is and the truth and until your circumstances start to obey the things that you believe in your heart. But if you just water down the word or you say, let's just fit it in or let's just make it fit into my circumstances. Let's get a new doctrine. That's where people got all those things from. God takes you through a desert and if he takes you through a desert, then this is going to happen. God sends suffering to teach you and this is going to happen. That's where that comes from. Changing the truth based on what people experience and go through. We will not do that. We will not change what we believe to be true. Sure. Jesus! <laughs> oh, I just love the truth. I, I, when I preach, um, many times in the Grace Conference, I started like this. I say, this place, you're not going to hear anything about reality. And I'm going to preach the truth so far removed from your reality that you, you, you will struggle to reconcile it, to make sense of it. But the point is, you have reality TV. <laughs> you have the newspapers. What If a preacher comes and he just reminds you of what you already know, <laughs> I'm not a news bulletin. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm, I'm a preacher. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring glad tidings. I come with glad tidings in a sad world. In sad situations, I come and preach a Christ that's awesome and good and perfect, that will never fail you. Sure. Oh, how beautiful are the feet. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Okay, so, because you have made the Lord your refuge, there shall no evil befall you. No calamity come near your tent. He will give His angels charge over you to accompany, defend and preserve you in all your ways. They shall bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, the serpent. You shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he knows and understands my name. 
I just love this. Listen, because he knows and understands my name. Has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness. Amplify there. It's beautiful. He has a personal knowledge of my mercy, love, and kindness. I will set him on high. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Please, don't stop there. I will deliver him. <laughs> you have to read. I'll be with him in trouble. You can't stop there. I will deliver him. It's the same sentence. Same sentence. Okay? I will deliver him. Um, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God's plan for you is long life. Long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Jesus. Okay, so just what am I saying? Let's look at Christ. He walked on water. Gravity. It brings me to my dream last night. Can I share this? Will you? Will you? Will you? Uh, if you think I'm crazy, you know already. So, but <laughs> can I share this dream? Okay. I dreamed. I did as a child also, but this was different. I dreamed that I. I, I flew, you know, I get gevlieg. Okay, so I was in the air, right? It's a dream. So I came to Clarissa and said, look, look what happened, what's happening. First of all, and then when I wanted to show you, it didn't work. <laughs> and as she turned away, I, I lift up. I said, look, and she turned around, and she was just amazed. And so I was flying in my dream. Okay. <laughs> and... A car came to drive, and he drives, and he was driving right at me. And I looked at the car, and it was too late to jump this side and that side, so I jumped up, just jumped right over the car. And as I got out, the people came out of the car, and they came to me, and said, "How did you do that?" And I started preaching, awesome. preaching the cross, yeah. what Jesus did. The yeah. people got saved. They received Christ. They were crying. It was revival. People were crying. Tears were rolling down their face. Then other people were standing there and I started preaching to them. I had a boldness because I just jumped over a car. I mean, how much boldness do you want? You know? you feel, I felt like every, every inch of fear disappeared. You know people, we are bold, right? But do you realize we all have a little bit of fear some way, sometimes? Just a little insecurity and a fear. In that dream, it was all gone. <laughs> it was an awesome feeling, I'm telling you. So it inspires me. I want that. So I just preach, preach, preach. It was amazing. But now, if that is true, then gravity, you get it? Has no hold on us. Let me explain this also to you. It means that distance between Places is taken out. It means that you can be here and preaching to another group of people in another country. And then you can be back here. <laughs> if we are one with Christ, that's exactly what happened. After he was raised from the dead, he appeared to them. And then he made sure that they know it's not just a ghost. It's a touch, feel, it is me. So, there's no limit then to your life in Christ. Christ died once. He gave up his life. He willingly submitted his life and said, you know, I need to do this. I'm doing this for you. He willingly, when they came to capture him and said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, he said, it is I. They all fell to the ground. They didn't worship him. They fell because of the glory and the power that was released when he said, it is I. And so he waited. You know, I have to go. So he willingly laid down his life. But now, after he was raised from the dead, you are in Christ. As he is, not as he was. As he is. So are we. So whatever Jesus did is not just the type of what we can be. It is our real life. As he is in this world, so are we. Go and read what Jesus did. And just realize it's explaining to you 
who you are. It's showing you the real you. The real you is not affected by natural laws like gravity. <laughs> the real you is also... Do you realize God is outside of time? Or outside of yeah, time, He is. But He's also, there's nothing, there's no distance. He's um, omnipresent. So if you look at some of the old covenant prophets, they had a glimpse of that. They said, Elijah said, and that there was a war, Elisha, and he said, Beware that you don't pass this place because the Syrians are there. The Syrians were just every time the people of Israel were protected. The Syrian uh, commander or the king were angry, said, Who is for Israel? There's none of us, Lord, but the prophet who is in Israel is telling the king of Israel what you are saying in your bedroom chamber. He knows what you are saying. You get it? No distance. If that is an old covenant prophet, what about you? Now Romans 8 says this. Creation is waiting for the sons of God to be made known. So creation is not waiting for anything else but the sons to be revealed. So that creation itself will be set free from rottenness to decay. And gain entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. You can read it. So, creation will gain entrance into this freedom. But the sons of God will first declare this freedom and show it to the world. How will you show it to the world? Oh, pastor, we just survive here until Jesus comes again. It doesn't say that in the word. It says we are constantly being transformed into his image. It says nothing about waiting until Jesus comes, then things will be better. Jesus came already. <laughs> he fixed the mess already. Made you one with him already. Yeah. So you're waiting for him to come and fix it again. He already fixed it. Yeah. It's time for you to believe what he did. Sure. So that you can fix it now. Yeah. On earth. He's waiting for his enemies to be made his footstool. He's waiting for his enemies. He's sitting down waiting for his enemies to be made a stool beneath his feet. Those enemies will submit to you. You are reigning with Christ. Romans 5. This is not, I'm just throwing everything out there now. Just throwing everything out there. You go and just hear what the Spirit is saying. But sons of God, it's time to arise and just to walk in your true identity in Him. As He is in this world, so are we. As, first of all, as righteous as He is. As holy. As holy as He is. As powerful as he is. As, as full of life as he is. <laughs> as he is. As full of joy as he is. <laughs> Everything of Christ is who you really are. You are not a normal human being. If you see the life of Jesus, you see the real you. It is you. That is you. The rest is just... What you think of you is not the real you. The world is therefore waiting for us to hear the truth so much that we actually start to manifest. Manifest the truth. This is what this ministry is about. We don't preach just the ideas for, for us to know. We preach it. We, that's why we will preach it again and again until it manifests. And so eventually this must manifest. Become real. But it's not going to become real if you're caught up with your reality always and try and figure out why God sent the suffering, what is His plan with the suffering. We have many messages that can guide you in that. He's not sending suffering to teach you anything. He teaches you through His Spirit and His Word. If suffering teaches you, then you ex exchange teachers. The Holy Spirit is your teacher, I thought. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. If you allow suffering to teach you, you exchange the teachers. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. Never let your circumstances teach you. I don't learn from, from my mistakes. I learn from the Spirit. 
I don't learn from my mistakes. I learn from the Spirit. Because we're so used to allowing everything and whatever happens around us to teach us. To find some wisdom from this world. While Christ became our wisdom. We are finding wisdom in the world while Christ became our wisdom. Drawing from the source. The true source. Christ. I want to draw from Him. I want to live in His glory. We want signs, wonders and miracles to follow us as we follow Jesus. <laughs> this is our heart because this is what the world, they will see that God is with you. That God is in you. That God is, this, surely this is a son of God. Creation is waiting for us. What an exciting life. That's why I'm going for the glory.